Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. I want to talk to you about eat your own harvest. And that comes, uh, that, that title comes uh, from an experience I had many, many years ago. You see, when we got married uh, 37 and a half years ago, Virginia and I, I had as a young man all kinds of ideas about what a woman ought to be like or whatever. And even though Virginia was amazing, so <laughs> amazing, so mature spiritually and so innocent of evil and full of goodness and God and the Word and all that, I took out my little chisel, my tongue, and started chipping away and chipping away and chipping away until in the end, within about a year and a half, two years, all I had was chips. I had hurt her and caused damage with my mouth. And then I came to my senses, sadly, and, uh, and repented and repented and repented before God. And, but she had certain, in two years or a year, about a, year, a little bit over a year, she had certain reactions build up that I had developed in her through the way I spoke. And then she had these reactions still, even though I changed my way. And then I talked to the Lord and I said, Lord, look how she's reacting to me. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, eat your own harvest. And I understood exactly by the Holy Spirit what he meant. It's amazing when God speaks to you, how he gives you understanding. And he gave me understanding that I needed to be consistently different. And then I am thereby eating my own harvest. Eating my own harvest also meant is don't blame her for the way she's reacting that you have made her, created her by your words, trained her how to be this way. Don't blame her for what you've caused. You change. And then over time she will change too as you just don't hold it against her the way you've trained her to react. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And I wanna to read to you here from Matthew chapter 13, starting at verse 33, okay? Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for a tree is known by its fruit. So I had produced fruit in Virginia. Right now I changed the tree and now the fruit is going to have to get better. Do you see? Eat your own harvest. Do you understand what I'm saying? But then Jesus, man, he, he nails it hard. He said, brood of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good things. An evil man, out of the evil treasure, brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word man speaks, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. You see, sometimes we don't live in the kind of consciousness I want to talk to you about. We ignore the fruit that is obvious. We ignore it. We don't pay attention. We blame people for the way they're acting, that we're causing them to act by the way that we speak. And yes, people are responsible for the way they act. I agree. I agree. But. I don't want to be the cause. I prayed that years ago. I said, Lord, never let me be a cause of stumbling to anybody else. I, I learned that prayer from David. He prayed that. I, I can't remember exactly right now where, that's, where David says that, but David prayed, never let me be a cause of anybody stumbling, Lord. And I, I prayed that. And, and I, I believe in this with all my heart when I'm talking to you about folks. Sometimes we need to make the tree different, but without Jesus, I don't see that's possible. But we do need to realize, you know, Pastor, I, the way that I, my wife is, yeah, I know, it's because I, the way I talk, the way my children are is because the way I talk. And some of that harvest is gonna take you a couple of years to, 
to remove. It's not going to happen overnight. It's, it's how many years have you been talking in this way? Uh, you know, if you're somebody who is nosy and, and, and sticks your nose into other people's business, you're going to cause people to, to watch when they're around you and to guard what they say because you can't be trusted because you immediately give opinions that haven't been asked for you to give or you immediately have ideas that, that's not your place so you don't hold good borders. So people are very protective around you or wouldn't open up to you because you don't know how to hold borders. And so that's your harvest. You've produced that by the way that you've spoken out of place or by the way you've given opinions when that's not your place to give it. So you have to now eat that harvest by being different constantly by the Holy Spirit's help, by Jesus' help. If you have been harsh in your way of talking, then people every time think you're being harsh when you're not, because that's your harvest. So you have to then eat that harvest and change your ways. You understand what I'm saying? Look what it says here in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20. A man's moral self shall be filled with the fruit of his mouth and with the consequences of his words. He must be satisfied whether good or evil. That's eat your own harvest. You're eating your own harvest. Your whole moral, co moral character is having to bear the kind of fruit that you produce. And I believe personally you can change. I really do. I believe that Robert can change. I am changing daily by the nature of my Savior in me. My words are becoming more cleansed. There's less contrariness. There's less strifefulness. There's less contention. There's more forbearance and meekness and long sufferance and goodness and enduring mercies. You see, my mouth is learning, is taking on the nature of my character. I read your scripture that my goodness has blessed me. It's real right here in Proverbs. It's chapter 14, verse 14. The backslider in heart from God and from fearing God shall be filled with the fruit of his own ways. Listen now, here it comes. And a good man shall be satisfied with the fruit of his ways, with holy thoughts and actions which his heart prompts in which he delights. A good man shall be satisfied with the fruit of his ways, with holy thoughts and actions which his heart prompts and in which he delights. I have prayed that and prayed that holy actions and thoughts that come from my heart in which I delight. Oh, I love having holy thoughts and actions that my whole being is holy, set apart unto God, that my whole mouth brings life and healing, that the fruit that I'm enjoying in my relationship with Virginia is sweet and good, that the fruit I'm enjoying with my sons that the fruit and my daughter and the fruit I'm enjoying with my grandchildren. Oh my goodness, friends. God wants you to be satisfied with your own moral character, with the thoughts that come from your own heart and your own mind. God wants you to be satisfied with the fruit that is produced by the words that come out of your mouth, not only in what you say, but how you say it. Oh, come on, friends, it's not just what you say. Jesus was full of grace and truth. It's first grace, then truth. It's the spirit by which he spoke that healed people even when he spoke straight. Just because we're full of grace doesn't mean we don't say things straight, but it's the spirit by which you say it that makes all the difference. If you speak the truth without grace, it will cause more harm than good most of the time. It's so important that you learn to speak by the grace that comes through the Lord Jesus Christ in your life every day and that you bring healing and that you enjoy the good fruit of God's favor and blessing in your life. Amen. Have a good day.